Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're talk about a really easy way that you could strum through Pride and Joy by Stevie Ray Vaughan. So we're not going to talk about how you detune it and do it as an E blues. We're going to work it as a capo first fret as a D blues. And we start out with kind of some intro licks, and if you wanted to kind of get these in there, you could start out on what will become second fret, but it is first fret. And we're going to take first fret and kind of slide the third fret on the B string, and then kind of do some more of that third fret. So it's kind of a one three slide. So I'm playing first fret on the B string and kind of sliding the third fret and then kind of doing some more third frets. And then we take the third fret and then kind of slide the sixth fret. And then we go back to the first fret, the third fret slide. And then there's this lick that we'll end up using part of later on where we go to the D string on the fifth fret and do a bend and then play fifth on the D and then third on fret on the D and then open D and then third fret on the, on the A string. So we got five bend where I'm kind of playing and kind of pushing down and into the guitar at the same time. And then five, three, oh, three. So you kind of got F, a C to D, D to F, C to D, and then G bend, G, F, D, C is kind of the notes that you're kind of kicking it off from. And then for our verse and our chorus, actually, it's pretty much the same chord progression following a 12 bar blues form and we start off on a D major chord and we play D first finger goes to the G string on the second fret second finger goes to the high E on the second fret third finger goes to the B string on the third fret and if you kind of strum just the D G B and E then that sounds a D major chord and it sounds really really happy now because of the bluesy nature of the tune though you may want to consider playing a D7 chord and the way you play D7 first finger goes to the B string on the first fret Second finger on the G string on the second fret, and then third finger on the high string on the second fret. And if you kind of strum just the D, G, B, and E, then that sounds like a D7 or a D dominant 7. It sounds really nasty in a really cool way. And then from the D, we're going to be going to a G chord. And then the G major, the way you play G major, first finger goes to the A string on the second fret. Second finger goes to the low E string on the third fret. The third finger goes to the high E string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like G major chord and it sounds really, really happy. But because of the bluesy nature of the tune, you may want to think about using a G7 chord when you play G7. First finger goes to the high E string on the first fret. Second finger is going to go to the A string on the second fret. And third finger on the low E string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like a G7 chord and it sounds really, really happy. And look really nasty in a cool bluesy way. And then from the G7, we're going to be going back to the D. And then we do some more D. But then we're going to go to an A major chord. And we play A major. First finger goes to the D string on the second fret. Second finger goes to the G string on the second fret. And third finger goes to the B string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an A major and it sounds really, really happy. Now, because it's a, of the bluesy nature of the two, you may want to lift off the second finger, which is a dangerous finger to lift. And that makes something called A7. You can kind of readjust your fingers, actually, that makes it a little bit easier. Another A7 that would be really cool is to kind of take the pinky and go to the high on the third fret. That's another way you can play A7, so you may want to kind of consider that for the A chord. And then from the A, we go back to the G, and then we go back to the D7. And then our turnaround in this tune is just kind of doing a really quick D and then an A. So if we kind of tried that through, through our intro, there are a couple different strum patterns actually, that, um, ways that you could kind of work this. One way would be doing it just down ups on, on the chord. So you could take a D7 and kind of feel it as kind of a long down, short up kind of idea. So one and two and three. So we tried that through our, our verse chorus. The, the weird part is at the very end, we kind of got just kind of a D and an A that kind of get half at the very end. It's kind of a turnaround. So we tried it that way. We have D, 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 G7.
think about yeah, using that. Now one of my favorite strum patterns for a 4-4 like this though is down, down, up, up, down, up, which you can kind of swing in a very similar way. So you take the D7 and kind of try down, down, up, up, down. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down. that you may want to think about using is some blues licks and this is a little bit easier to demonstrate actually for a chord that we don't use um it's something called an e lick where you do the first finger on the a string on the second fret and if you do kind of a down up over the e and the a strings it's kind of two, uh, 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 kind of a two string strum you can kind of do a, a down up with the first finger and then take the on the a string second fret and then take the third finger and go to the a string on the fourth fret and do a down up so you're kind of doing down up with one down on the third finger to kind of get kind of a loosey kind of sound. And there are a lot of different variations of this that you can kind of work. I'm, I'm kind of doing first finger to third finger. Another variation would be doing first finger and then going to third and then lifting off back to the first finger early. So you have one, one, three, one, 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 three, one, 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 three, one. It's kind of a variation of that. Another variation of that that we're, we're using the third finger on the low E string, which can be kind of a cool idea. And then something else you may want to play around with is using the pinky on the A string. And what, what, one, one thing I like is one, one, three, one, four, one, three, one. It's kind of a walking bass line idea, which can be very cool. And all this is kind of that long, short down ups. So one, 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 three, one, four, one, three, one, finger wise on the A string. I'm actually playing the second fret to the fourth fret to the fifth fret. <laughs> so you can kind of play around with those, and if we took that idea and put the first finger on the D string instead, then that would make a whole bunch of things I call the A licks, and that could work for our A chords in the song. And then if you take the first finger and go to the G string instead, you could take all those ideas and then work on the D and the G string. So these would be B lick ideas. If we tried our form that way, we'd have kind of two licks for, for each of our, our, our chords. So D, 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 D. Then when we get to our G, we could kind of jump out into those down ups. times though like through our verses actually where there's this cool little stop time thing too where you kind of do the kind of just go down on the D and kind of kill it and you'll hear Stevie kind of take a little piece of that intro lick where we had that, that five bend five three or five bend five three oh and you may want to do the five three oh as kind of a pull off actually you could do it kind of a fifth fret to third fret pull off and then kind of let the first finger kind of do a pull off to the open string it's almost like a double pull off so I'm pulling third fret off the third fret on the D string and then let my first finger fall off. And actually you can do that out of the bend. <laughs> Which could be a very cool thing. So like five bend, five three oh. Five bend, five three oh. Five bend, five three oh. So you may want to kind of hit the D. <laughs> and then kind of work that leg as kind of a thing on your verses and then pick it up on the G. So that could kind of take this kind of substitute in for the D chord. So that's something else you may want to kind of try. Now the bass line through this is very, very cool too. And it almost sounds like the, 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 the shuffle idea, which works off of some things called arpeggios. So on a D chord, 
And the D note is actually what we call the root of the chord. And actually, this might make a little bit of, of sense doing kind of working around some bass notes. And, and one way to, to kind of incorporate bass notes, we could even take the down, down, up, up, down, up that we're doing and kind of play a, just a bass note for that first down. So on the D chord, you could do kind of a D string bass and then keep your down, up, up, down, up. So D with a D bass, down, up, up, down, up. D with a D bass, down, up, up, down. that way through through our, our form. The weird part is where we get that D and A at the end where you may want to just work just kind of a bass down up on each one. So we have D with the D bass down, up, up, down, D with the D bass down, up, up, down, D with the D bass down, up, up, down, D with the D bass down, up, up, down, to some Louis bass down, up, up, down, to some Louis bass down. Also, kind of hear this bass line in the background through the tune where you go D string open, second on the low E, and then open A, and then third foot on the A, and that's kind of a rounded D chord. And you're, what you're doing is playing notes of the D7 chord. It's going D, F sharp, A, C, D, F sharp, A, C, D, F sharp, A, C. So when we're playing the D7 chord, that's actually the notes that you're playing in the chord. Now, if you're really slick, <laughs> you can kind of get a, a Texas Shuffle kind of idea um, where you could do the D string as kind of your root and then do an up on the D chord. Go find out a way to do the low E second fret and then do another up and then open A and then another up and then third fret on the A and then another up. So you can almost kind of work that as kind of a bass idea around the chord. same kind of idea by going low E string on, on, on the third, second on the A, and then another up, and then open D, and then another up, and then second on the A, and then another up. So you're kind of going low E, A string, D string, A string, low E, A, D, A is kind of a G lit kind of idea. Kind of working that down up idea through that whole lit. And on the A, you could do the open A, and then four on the A, and then second on the D, back to forth on the A, and you could kind of work that around the chord in that same kind of way, or you could even kind of work that around the A lick, that might be a little bit easier, so kind of try and bring out those bass notes, you know, kind of around like the A, you could almost kind of take your first string and kind of lay it down over the, the D, G, B to cover the A notes, to kind of get that to come out. So we tried that through our intro form, or through our verse chorus, we have D, D, Now the weird part is to play along with Steve Ray Vaughan instead of starting on a D major, he's actually starting on an E flat major. So to play along with Stevie, what you want to do is take a capo and if you put it on first fret, and now your D is really an E flat major, your G major is really an A flat major, and your A is really a B flat major. But we can still kind of kick it off with, with kind of that intro lick. You just have to kind of kind of add one more fret to everything that we were kind of thinking before. kind of play around with kind of opening up the tune that way and then we, we got our verse form we can follow a lot of different ways actually you can just do that down down um or just the down notes so <laughs>
down, up, and then we have the D down, up, up, down, D down, 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 down, up, up, down, D down. bass idea through that and have to do the bass down up up down do the D 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 bass down First, we can kind of hit the D with counting down, and do our lick, and then 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 we'd be bad at the G, so we could even pick that up with kind of our bass down, up, up, down, up, or, uh, or, or, or even the, just the down ups. solo there um you can even try that that shuffle idea where we're doing the bass arpeggios it's kind of that that no chord no chord kind of kind of down up so we have b and the g solo actually or, or, or we could we'll use our blues licks actually like go through that second part of the solo D licks D licks D licks G G U D D A G D We've got the kind of the D lick down, lick, D lick, D lick, D. And then we're back on the G. G, D, G, D, D, D. What you probably want to do is kind of take little of all that and then kind of figure out what's going to be really good for you to kind of work in for the team and kind of play around with it. But that's the basics of how you can strum through Pride and Joy by Steve Ray Rollins. So good luck!